The Great Mobile Firewall of Australia officially came into force on the 28th of October 2024. A reported 516,875 active devices were blocked from Australian networks. What many thought was simply the result of switching off 3G was actually a government mandated IMEI block to many locally and internationally purchased 4G and 5G devices, including those used by tourists visiting Australia. While that doesn't directly tell us how many IMEIs are now network blocked, it would easily be in the millions and includes phones that have never connected to an Australian network. Australians have been cut off from vital communication as some phones can no longer call triple zero. Unimaginable amounts of e-waste have been created and it has forced people to buy new devices amid a cost of living crisis. Telstra's 3G network remained up till about the 2nd of November while Optus is still currently in the process of the switch off, although the majority has been shut down. The shutdown was announced before its impacts were fully understood. Telecom's policy expert Rudolf Vanderberg describing the shutdown as mismanaged, made to appear as if it wasn't a big deal and only affected a few stragglers with dumb phones. Many Australians woke up on the 28th of October to find their 4G and 5G phones without service. According to my research, Australia is the world's first country without any 2G and 3G network coverage. Without these networks, many phones just don't work quite right. Many were not designed to work without 2G or 3G coverage, as we'll soon demonstrate. Most Sony, OnePlus, LG, Fairphone, and even some Xiaomi phones have been blocked, while a few international iPhone models, including ones as new as the iPhone 11 and 12, James has been completing a list of user submissions from his petition of just what devices people have been kicked off the network with. Because your phone must work on all three Australian networks. Consumers who didn't buy their phone from the telco, but through retailers or switch telcos can now find some of their functioning phones are now on a block list, even when voice over LTE works. But the telcos aren't fully to blame. Telstra pleaded with the government to only mandate blocking phone calls and leave data and SMS working for affected phones. Allowing customers to be informed by SMS and not to be completely blocked from using their devices. This would have allowed the use of third party apps to make internet calls like the means of Facebook Messenger or Signal. The government declined. Two days prior to the shutdown, my sister-in-law received an email from her telco stating her OnePlus 8 Pro would work after the shutdown of 3G. After all, it's a 5G phone with voice over LTE and all the network bands required for Australia, including band 28. But on the 28th of October, her phone lost signal, displaying no service. It had been blocked regardless, without any warning. She was forced to rush out and find another phone that would be allowed to work. When running the 3G checker, the phone is reported as being a OnePlus 8 Pro. But the checker tool reports it as being a Chinese model, IN2020, stating it doesn't support emergency calling. But in settings, you can prove it's in fact a US model, IN2025. Looking at the spec sheet, the Chinese model lacks band 28, but the US model supports it. But it gets worse. There's no clear dispute process that allows an individual to have a device unblocked. Her telco simply said there was nothing they could do and that her only option was to purchase another supported phone. I flew to Brisbane to meet with James, the man I recently interviewed for my previous video prior to the shutdown. He showed me a range of devices he's been testing with a SIM card for just about every telco in the country. And his findings are shocking. Take this Sony. It's an Australian model purchased from Telstra. It's on Telstra's support list, so it works with a Telstra SIM, but install an Optus SIM and the phone is network blocked. Only phones capable of calling emergency services were supposed to be blocked. However, even in this blocked state with Optus, the device can still make an emergency call, but is blocked from calling any other number, sending an SMS or using data. Well, how about this iPhone 6S? It's the second oldest iPhone allowed to work on Australian networks. This one isn't running the newest version of iOS supported, iOS 15. Instead, it's running iOS 10.2.1, 
The oldest iOS version, Optus says supports emergency calling over 4G. But yet this iPhone can't place an emergency call. It gets stuck dialing indefinitely, with the signal dropping 4G after a few seconds, and then displaying no service. Ending the call, service returns. This result is the same whether the phone has no SIM, an Optus SIM, or a Vodafone SIM. However, if you use a Telstra SIM card, the call goes through and connects. You have dialed emergency triple. Emergency calling support is a software issue, and you can't tell what software people are using from an IMEI or TAC code. Newer software on the iPhone works with emergency calling, but older versions don't. If an elderly person has a compatible phone, but didn't know how to update it, or maybe someone just didn't have the storage to install the update, they may not be able to call triple zero. Android phones are also affected. I have one that acts just like the iPhone 6S. Network is lost and the phone freezes after dialing triple zero. All because Australia has cut off critical 3G network infrastructure required for emergency calling on millions of phones to instead rely on a non-standardized, poorly implemented system known as Voice over LTE. That's why there was a sudden rush, just weeks prior to the shutdown, to madly block phones. But they'll never account for all incompatible devices. The dark green line that nose dives to zero is the option they chose for the shutdown, instead of delaying it to, I don't know, late 2026? Some smartphones, including 5G phones, were not designed to work without the presence of a 2G or 3G network and Australia is learning this the hard way. This means mobile phones will likely be forced into obsolescence earlier than ever before. Now a telco can block your phone if they think it can no longer call triple zero or can't verify it. This could be as soon as it stops receiving software updates. To this day, I don't think the telcos and government fully understand the extent of this issue. And it's likely you won't either until you have to dial triple zero. The government is informing people not to test call triple zero, yet they never provided a real way to test an individual device. Functional devices have been blocked mistakenly and some which don't work were not blocked. Concern was raised by many about how this would come to affect tourists. Before the network went down, we didn't really know, but now we do. If you think you can just come to Australia and use your current phone, boy, some people are gonna get a real shock because not all phones will work in Australia once you hit the tarmac, like they once did. If you land in the US with an incompatible phone, you'll most likely receive an SMS telling you and informing you to use data, SMS, or app-based calling because voice over LTE isn't supported on your device or with your international roaming plan. The Australian approach is to just eye the eye block the device from all network service, including phone, SMS, and data, and to provide Absolutely no explanation. Tourists and international roamers will have the same network blocking restrictions applied. James demonstrated this to me through the use of a three UK SIM card installed in an internationally purchased Sony phone. When installed, if it connects to an Optus or Telstra tower, the phone becomes network blocked and won't work. But if you're lucky, you'll quickly force the phone to use Vodafone after toggling aeroplane mode a few times, you can get service and make calls. The number you're calling from, press one. James also demonstrated how if you use a local Australian SIM card in conjunction with this international SIM card in a dual SIM phone, both SIMs become blocked from service. Of course, with hundreds of carriers worldwide, functionality will vary. But if you're traveling to Australia, good luck because we don't really know what is and isn't supported for international tourists. As I was walking to meet James in Brisbane City, my phone suddenly lost network connection on my main SIM card. Both SIMs in my phone are with the same provider, yet one displayed no service while the other had full reception. I toggled aeroplane mode and service returned. However, the next day I woke to no service, but this time on my second SIM card, with full service remaining on my main SIM. This time, toggling aeroplane mode didn't fix the issue. After flying back home, service didn't return, but after a reboot, it now has. I can only hope it will keep working, but honestly, I really don't know. They may be in the process of blocking my phone, even though it supports voice over LTE, voice over Wi-Fi, Band 28, and even boots with a Telstra logo. I mean, can it be any more Telstra compatible if it tried? 
but that doesn't necessarily mean they won't block it in the future. People have already been caught out upgrading from unsupported devices to an Australian sold phone that was blocked only a few months later as part of this shutdown. With such a lack of transparency on the blocks, you currently can't buy a used phone in Australia, as it may be blocked with all carriers, some carriers, or maybe blocked in future if they believe it was incorrectly verified. We don't really know. But with no proper test number or procedure ever issued, those concerned that their phones may not be able to call triple zero don't have a way to know. We have proven there are still devices out there unable to call emergency numbers without 3G, even if they support voice over LTE for normal phone calls. The reason they don't want people to call triple zero is because it may overwhelm the system and prevent people who are actually in an emergency from getting through. I would be interested in knowing how much e-waste has come as a result of this shutdown. I think the government has a lot to answer for, but my guess here is that we'll never have the answers to some of these questions that we have. The shutdown was downplayed the whole way, so why would they be honest now? Rudolf Vandenberg has also expressed his concerns. He said he's never experienced a country to shoot itself in the foot and brick a few hundred thousand phones that do support voice over LTE, but not on all networks or not officially. He says it's a cautionary tale for the rest of the world. If you're a phone repairer like myself, you may be interested in my application iTest, available for both iOS and Android. iTest provides the ability to test hardware functions of a phone or tablet with both a semi-automatic mode or manual mode, allowing you to easily test functions that would otherwise be too complicated without the aid of such an application. These include things like the compass, gyroscope, proximity and light sensors, or even screen burn-in. At the end of testing, you can get a nice little overview of your results and easily share them if needed. And on that note, this has been a Hugh Jeffries video. If you like what you saw, consider subscribing and check out the playlist for tech that's not what it seems. If you're looking for any used devices, be sure to check out my online store, link for which is down in the description. That's all for this video, and I'll catch you guys next time.